welcome back my dear friends welcome back to ever so amazing sexy age of wonders planet fall we continue on as ever so amazing lysander griffin heart of the vanguards of the star union or above all of the griffin heart clan now lysander of course being an amazing king if you will of the clan the griffin heart clan a descendant of a big big a long ass line on the planet Palladra. He is cunning and very smart, of course, as it comes with uh, being a king within the Star Union. Of course, king, duke, many different, I would say, ranks, if you will. There are different callings, different titles, but he was a king of, of Paladra. And that's why we always will have Paladra as a starting base of operation, a starting city. And at the moment, we are in a planet that was supposed to be populated and actually should have been in a fine state. But it would seem something went very wrong after 200 years in cryo the world has changed and star union it would seem is gone but that aside there are a lot of things for us to explore beyond our borders beyond paladra you can see it this way on our beautiful beautiful overview and see all these sectors and we can capture and control due time of course because we need to expand we need food we need peoples we need everything we already know that we have few quests but first and foremost search for survivors search for survivors exploration send out your owl scouts to look for any star union presence in the vicinity hint not all armies on the strategic map are hostile to you. Only when an army banner is showing a skull, you should be careful to interact with it. Objectives Paragon Faction Met. Reward 15 Influence. And so we receive another quest. Find the alien ship. I think we have seen this, but I could be wrong. Exploration. Of course, locate the landing spot of the unknown vessel. Ship found, Vanguard gunship, and some research. And of course, Staples. Yes, we did. We did actually say this. We have already read all the quests, if I'm not mistaken, previous. The little robot of the lieutenant, of the lieutenant Jiang, has run off to, to this port 6 place. What exactly is it? Go places. There are no traffic jams in space. Trent McClan, our oh, astronaut. Port 6. Spaceports. Landmark. Owner. Marauder Guard. War. So we are at war with them. This landmark is an advanced production sector and gives the following when annexed. 60 production plus 6 production or what? Or, or people. We get some energy and more people. Colonists. Additionally, it unlocks the following building in your colony. Spaceship Maintenance Bay. Factions with a claim on this sector. Lysander Greifenhardt. Beautiful. Order required. Of course, we are yet to move Lysander to start exploring all this. But as you can see, at the moment, in a distance, our scouts tend to report, and we can see some certain cre creatures of the night. 
something strange. A Hopper Hound Blade Maw with Hopper Hound Manhunter Tier 1 and Tier 2 Skirmisher unit. We also have some Mega Beetle Babies. Interesting. They are on something. Imperial Production Stockpile. It's a pickup. When collected, instantly produces one of two randomly picked colony upgrades. Interesting. So that means if we do capture that, take that from the bugs, we will be able to gain a building inside Paladra, which is actually quite a beautiful thing because we would be needing a few new things without actually paying for them. As you can of course see, here we can see the HQ sector and at the moment we have 19 food. Food is used to grow the population of your colonies and keep them alive. You can see that the upkeep is eating 6 food. Next, energy. Energy is used as upkeep for your troops and certain buildings and to launch special operations. It can also be used to buy units or buildings in a pinch. Production. Production allows you to build units, specialize sectors and upgrade your colonies. Research or knowledge is used to rediscover and apply the lost technologies of the Star Union. It affects how quickly you research new society and military technologies. We'll definitely need a lot more of that. And happiness of course, slot, income and of course upkeep is again kinda killing our happiness within the Paladra. Happiness is used in income for a happiness event. Positive happiness leads to happiness event. Negative, of course, leads to unrest and riots. And at the moment, population is 3 within Paladra. There are many things classical to Age of Wonders 3, for instance, well, Age of Wonders in general, from which you can create units, create buildings specific to the faction, sector production, which is completely new thing, and of course a little bit unique colonist th uh, tab within it we can actually see that we have a growth in three turns so that's three turns until the next colonist arrives that means we're gonna have four colonists in three turns happiness plus six colonists require happiness to stay productive positive happiness can build up to a happiness event giving your city a boost in resource income Unhappiness can lead to an unrest event, which can cause a number of your colonists to stop working. Your happiness per turn determines whether you are building up to a happiness event or an unrest event, which will trigger when a certain amount of happiness or unhappiness has accumulated. So 6 turns until next happiness event. Very nice. Again, it's the upkeep at the moment is killing us. So we have the colonist management also, a little bit more of a unique thing. It reminds me of the Endless Legend, an amazing game which I will might do at a certain point in time. So at the moment, because we only have three colonists, we have all on each of the specific things. We have one on the food, one on the energy and one on production. And we need another one for the knowledge. Of course, this is an auto. We can also do it manually. We can assign two colonists on food if we wish it so. I'm gonna give it on auto. Because to be honest, it's fine. When we have more colonists, like its maximum is 16. We have maximum of some of those. We'll see how that's actually gonna work for us. We have food sharing also. Which we can uh, tell them to prevent a deficit. Share all, shall have or take. And we also can instigate a martial law. Interesting stuff, completely new uh, compared to the Age of Wonders 3. And of course, Colony Center, which we already seen, we have changed the name. We can raise it and we can see actual structures within the colony. And of course, some sector analysis features, fertile plains, a river, arid, and there you go. And location, of course, Paladra. And we can see the owner and, of course, the race. Thank you very much. So that's all about that, which is, again, more most important thing. Again, we do have some operations, but we'll see them down the line. Of course, objective we have seen before. An overview panel and military overview. All of my armies that we have within the Griffin Heart clan. And of course, Unit Template Manager. Again, a very unique thing, 
I would say much inspired by the Endless Legend, where you can take one of your units and upgrade them, give them specifics, and see them uh, with new mods, that is. At the moment we have no mods, so utilizing any of these is useless. Of course we have a diplomacy screen, which has no use to us, because we have not met anyone to have any kind of diplomatic uh, relation with. And that's about it. So the first thing we shall do, move Lysander with Lieutenant Jiang towards these bugs. There are four of these bugs in the distance within the Lost Virtues Ashland. Let's move in. Let's see how much Lieutenant Jiang can... Okay, so we have a direct route towards them. But the problem is we cannot encompass an attack from two different directions at this moment. So that is a bit of an issue. So what we will be doing is actually positioning ourselves a little bit differently. We'll move Lieutenant Jiang over to this with her APC and two owls. And, of course, Lysander will be moving towards this location here. With his army. We could take them on, but I would prefer if both of my heroes, a commander and, of course, Lysander himself, get XP. Experience is very important, of course, for any soldier. And, of course, we have a very dangerous enemies right in front of us. We have one tier 2 unit and all rest of them tier 1. We have a Hopperhound Blade Maw, a very dangerous creature of choice it would seem. So many bugs. The bright red carapace clicked. It inched backwards against the cliff wall. It was the largest Hopperhound we've seen in generations. Long bloody slashes adorned the few remaining hunting dogs that brayed at it. The townsfolk closed in, raising their rifles for the kill. The first shot cracked the air, but a huge red hopper was already gone. It leapt over the dogs and encroaching villagers, striking a soldier. The man fell flat, dropping his weapon as the creature's razor-sharp claws stabbed at him. Brian Froden, RV3480E, hunting bugs on the frontier. And what this thing has is 40 health points, 2 defense, no shielding, 32 movement points. He has a claw strike, it does certain damage, and it can cause bleeding to biological or cyber targets for 3 turns. High impact stagger units, reducing action points and cancelling defensive modes. And of course, melee bypasses all shields. Air leap. The unit leaps into the air, damaging any flying units before landing behind them. Any flying units? Interesting. So that way it can actually damage any of my owls if we engage in the battle with these monstrosities. Interesting. 10 damage in general, I can see. And of course, combat jump. Jump to the target light ground unit. Interesting. Dealing damage, knocking, knocking them back. Again, in bleeding. High impact stagger units reducing action points. Ignores line of sight penalties and only affects ground targets. So it has this attack, the air attack, and the ground. A jump and air jump interesting very very monstrous thing it's an animal biological land woman light unit and a skirmisher it has no mods whatsoever but we also have a hopperhound manhunter <laughs> a little bit it's a little bit it's a cousin <laughs> of oh, the bigger version which is blade maw much more dangerous but it says the same thing you have the Claw Strike, Air Leap, Combat Jump. What's the difference? It has one less armor and 40, that's 10 health points less. It's basically the same attack, 
pattern. I remember the first year in Sandu Valley in the farming colony. The rich soil and favorable climate made life ideal for growing crops. Our community grew strong as we lived our happy lives one bountainous harvest after the next. We prospered for a decade spreading out over the valley until something wicked awoke in Hopper Hill. A manhunter, green and covered in spines, its legs were sights leaping across our fields. It cares nothing for our crops, it hungers for the men who cultivated the land. We are its crop. Patchery Maz, RV 698BD, The Surrender of Sandu Valley. Or 88D, sorry, 88D, the surrender of Sandu Valley. So again, evil. Bugs. <laughs> Bugs all around. Mega Beetle Baby, a pincer attack of 12 damage. A Beetle Spit, which does poison damage. And of course, uh, it applies that poison for 3 turns. But he's affected by line of sight rules. He has a biochemical resistance. Interesting. So that's defense 3. Uh, 3 armor and 25 health points. Not really the biggest thing I would be afraid of, to be honest. It's a tier 1 unit. It has a, a beetle death rattle, though. When killed, this unit explodes, dealing 8 damage, destroying 1 uh, defense and causing high impact to all adjacent units. So splash damage in general. So again, eight. Uh, how should I say? Poison damage, biological. That is the biochemical damage, if you will. It is a biochemical, so biochemical damage. Uh, metamorphosis. The unit evolves when it reaches the prime rank. Rapid evolution. The unit gains fifty percent more experience when victorious in combat. The numbskulls at Terratech thought to use these beetle creatures as beasts of burden for low-tech colonization. <laughs> Fools! Their specimens were juveniles. These profit-driven middle managers moved to market so fast and with so little scientific oversight that they infest hundreds of worlds with insectoid juggernaut offspring before realizing their mistake. All because anything that's alien sells. You can't just file off a creature's mandibles and change its nature. The beetle puppy still explode if they die. And what happens when a beetle baby becomes beetle adult? Professor R. Len, Bugman Bunsen, RV 1815, SETI Alpha Outpost Recordings. So these are our enemies for the next turn. Now of course, again, skull over them, that means they are very, very angry. But it doesn't mean we don't have to utilize our scouts, our owls. And our owls will take this, which is Imperial Supply Stash. Let's pick it up. Supply Stash. You found a salvageable Imperial Supply Reserve containing 24 food. Unfortunately, the container logs are destroyed and you can't trace where the resources come from. We'll take that food nonetheless. It is a very much needed. So we will wait. More of the bugs we can see due to our owl. A lot of the e these evil blade maws and manhunters. A lot of them. But thankfully, we can deal with them. We can actually deal with them. In Paladra, we can start building something if we want. And we shall do that. Paladra, what shall we take? I will go for Central Science Lab. Due to inability, again, I prefer knowledge if we can research as much as possible. I think Lysander would prefer that. Research, technology and mods, so we can help our men, our people, to survive this planet. A basic research facility provides a boost to a newly settled colony's research effectiveness. Provides plus 10 research. Knowledge. I'm gonna call it research, but knowledge. Produce. Thank you very much. And that's all I'm gonna do for now. Of course, you can stack certain things if we want, of course, to build a soldier. It will go after it's finished with the building, etc. But at the moment, 
this is it. We do have many quests, but these quests will wait. We can also see that there are actually three commanders unknown to us alongside with, of course, the neutral faction. Let's see. Orders require nothing. We will wait. We will wait. We can wait for one turn or guard. Which removes the army, so it never asks you again if you want to move this unit. So just do wait for one turn and end this turn and see what happens. Unknown commander moving. Turn 2 since planet fall. <coughs> I do not think that at the moment we have any mission that is actually timed. Excellent. Let's move our lieutenant Jiang to the side. Let's bring in this owl. It will help quite a bit. It has beautiful abilities. We have seen that previously, if I'm not mistaken. But we shall see it in combat. Here comes Lysander Griffin Hart preparing to cleanse a place from bugs. Starship Trooper style. And of course, we can see the attack power of ours, 1,100 compared to defender power. So if you win, we can auto combat or we can manual combat. In Age of Wonders, since the very beginning, you can actually move many armies, encircle the enemy completely and have massive battles due to that. So we'll do, of course, manual combat. Our very first combat within this beautiful, amazing game called Age of Wonders Planet Fall. <clears throat> of course, this doesn't mean we'll win this battle. We might lose some men. I'm gonna try not to, of course. I will try not to. Beetles moving in. Okay, defense mode. If you're left at least with something uh, of a move, you see three movement points. Everybody has three movement points. And of course, I think there are no more than three movement points. So this is our very first battle. And of course, as we are positioned, we have Lieutenant Jiang to the side, Lysander with his forces on this point. Then the enemy defending this thing that we need to capture, the resources. And up front, of course, we have the beetles. And the beetles themselves can move, but we'll have to have, the, let's see, the spit, the battle spit. See, this is the amount they can actually reach. But hopefully they will not poison us. Now, Lieutenant Jiang in the APC has this beautiful thing. It takes three, so it's a full action. It 100% is going to happen. Start the APC scanners up to given target information to all friendly units, increasing both accuracy by 15% and morale by 100 for two turns. We can do that immediately, or we can wait it out until we are really in the position to do any damage and then open fire. But I will do that immediately. Activate your ability. Lieutenant Jiang, I've never actually utilized this, so it's gonna be an interesting thing. Or not. Uh huh, okay. So I was thinking that this actually works on all units on the battlefield. So it's just specifically to my units here. Hmm, that's not then I wanna utilize. That's not something I wanna utilize then immediately. So what I'm gonna do with Lieutenant Jiang. She will stay where she is, to be honest. She has a party, some manhunters moving in with beetles, no less. The true line of sight is gonna be the thing, though. We can do, like, mm -hmm. will she be able to open fire? That's the real question. Upon the enemy, out of range. It really is the question if she will be able to fire beyond the rocks, but I don't think so, to be honest. Let's position you over here, Lieutenant Jiang, like this. Excellent. No overwatch for Lieutenant Jiang, but let's see what else she has. She has a drone module, repair module. It will expire after four turns. Can only be used once per battle. 
So at the moment we have no need for it. With the moment we have no need for it. What I am gonna be doing is gonna move my owls to help out our forces to the side. And of course Lysander. Why? Because owls have a special ability. A very unique ability. Not the laser repeater, though it does nice damage. <laughs> nice laser damage of 9. Fires laser repeater at a target. Air to air, plus 33% additional damage against flying units. But no, that this is the thing. Targeting field. A target enemy unit becomes 35% easier to hit for 2 turns. And has a cooldown or 1 turn. This is actually the thing that I like. And I will be utilizing immediately on the Manhunters. It really, though, to be honest, doesn't matter if it's the Manhunters or whoever. It's gonna work nicely for us. So she's gonna stay here for now because she's at the moment very much alone. She only has the support of the Owl. But on this side, I would say that our friend Lysander has way more abilities. Has a lot of Vanguard Troopers. Not a lot of cover, though. Not a lot of cover. If we're gonna be utilizing Overwatch, we need at least one action point remaining, if I'm not mistaken. So what I'm gonna do is, first, send a Vanguard unit to help out Lieutenant Jiang. Get over here. Though, I can move you full speed. I have no need for the overwatch from you. At least one unit to, to just be there to help Jiang. Next is Lysander. Lysander doesn't have any special special abilities. Again, wide field laser array. Fire a and flurry and flurry fire and flurry. Okay, and flurry of laser fire at an area in front of the unit, dealing significant damage. High input stagger unit, reducing action point. But of course it's only one, if I'm mistaken. It's just like, yep. It has to be like in front of you. That's gonna be a problematic to be honest. Next Vanguard unit. Move in into the defense, get a little bit closer towards the enemy. Excellent, you have enough for the overwatch. Overwatch, excellent. Next. Vanguard unit, up here, overwatch. The enemy does have beetles, and those beetles do have the ability to <coughs> shoot at us from the distance. That should not be a problem if we do this smart way. We do have a bike, additional bike, not just Lysander with the bike, but an additional bike. There you go, assault bike. And what I want to do with this assault bike, because he does have a huge... Movement points, 40 movement points for the bikes, by the way. 40 movement points. And you can, of course, see on the bottom how much it's going to take from us. So we can go full over here, like fully move towards this location with the bike and get uh, to the flanking of the enemy bugs. Because the flanking is one of the most important things in Age of Wonders. If you flank well... You're gonna do some nice criticals. <coughs> to be honest, I would do this immediately also with Lysander and do the damage from uh, the back, so to speak. But if we have one bike over there, I don't think Lysander is gonna do much where he is as is. Like, I could go with him to the side here to help out Lieutenant Jiang, because why the hell not, right? Press 4 to tell him it's fine. We can move on to the next turn. Next unit. Wait it out. Jiang, wait it out. Thank you very much. Now she is going to go into defense mode. It becomes 25% harder to hit and cannot be flanked due to this. <coughs> also heavier units cannot be flanked. Uh, well, they will not turn after being flanked. While well, the basic units would turn towards the fire of the enemy. So you can outflank them again and screw them in the butt. Let's end the turn and see what the bugs do. 
So the beetles moving in. Overwatch doing the damage. Not the huge damage. But Graze and Poison has been resisted. More beetle moving through towards Lieutenant Ji Young. She is in a defense, hopefully. It's only a Graze. And you can see the hoppers hopping, the manhunters, and here comes the bad boys. Much worse <laughs> units than the manhunters. But the manhunters, do remember, actually have, at the moment, the target for one more turn. So they're gonna be easily targeted, three point, easily targeted by our own units. And that's exactly what I wanted. They're perfect position for me to do some damage with Lysander. Now the Lysander is going to waste all his ammunition. And of course you press control key. Impact stagger. Plus 3 from targeted. Minus 50% long range. Because we are too far away. We can move a little bit more. Like this without actually losing too much. And we can still open fire and do more damage now as you can see we don't have a negative so let's open fire with Lysander oh <laughs> damn nice job Lysander nice job our forces we're gonna move them here that's one action point let's get the Vanguard trooper now of course Vanguard trooper has a grenade but sadly I don't think it's gonna do much. It's not gonna do much. So first and foremost, now do remember, we do not have this ability. That is uh, the target field on the much worse unit. Which is, of course, this disgustingly big Kakarocha, a Hopperhound Blade Maw. I'm trying to re actually remember the names. <laughs> so we've done that. Wasted all the action points on this Vanguard Owl. But it, it, that's not the end. That is not the end. Let's see. Again, minus 25% defense mode. That's what the enemy is in. And of course, long range. We're too far away to actually do the most damage we want. But that's not it. That's not what we're going to be doing here. We're going to first do damage. With the well, let's finish off the bugs, the the men hunters. Enemy neutralized. Excellent. So they can't outflank us this way. Now, of course, remember the owls still have the ability to fire at these bastards. Defense mode. This is not gonna really protect you. Excellent job, owl. Let's see what's happening on the... Okay, so this is going to be a beautiful thing due to us utilizing now an assault bike to get behind the enemy and do some damage. Get over here. Do you have an ability to shoot at the enemy? No, out of range. Out of range. Then we're going to waste you like this. Get behind the beetles. They're the thing for us. Get close enough or target him from this distance. It's the long range penalty, but 85% uh, of the. Wow, and a plus 30 aim. Awesome, beautiful. We might actually kill outright this unit. But we also have these Vanguard units, and they're too far away to do any damage to the hopper. So I would actually move these bad boys and do the damage upon uh, the, uh, the baby beetles. So what I would do with this trooper, get as close as possible and do damage on them. Wow, even from this distance there's a possibility of a complete kill on the blade maws. Well, one blade maw that is alive. But Lieutenant Ji Young have not opened fire whatsoever in this battle, so she will do this. Get a little bit closer if you can. It's only one action point to open fire. Long range. Long range, eh? Let's get close and personal with that bug. Still is not gonna kill. Sadly. <laughs> Still no death. But, but my dear friends. 
if we get we can do this with our bad boys i get in cover defense mode and 40 percent negative that we might even miss him by the way we might even miss him Wow, that's too far. We're going to lose a lot of points that way. Enemy Ex destroyed. Excellent job, my friends. Excellent job. There goes more difficult enemies. Much more dangerous enemies, that is. Though, to be honest, Lieutenant Jiang is kind of open to the Mega Beetle Babies. If they dare do anything, that is the thing. Open fire, Commander! Enemy eliminated. Beautiful job! Amazing job! Now full movement from the Vanguard unit. Vanguard troopers. That's it, my friends. End the turn. One unit left. The Mega Beetle Beetle Baby Beetle. Getting close into the action of... Wow, they're not, not attacking with the claws. But not a pincer attack, but a beetle spit. Thinking that they could do more damage that way. How wrong are you? Let's drop again. Targeting field. To be sure, right? To have a better percentage of actually doing the damage upon these monstrosities. Lysander, if you would. I think it would be perfect if you actually kill the bastard. Get over here. You have Axel, one more. And I think that would be the end. Enemy annihilated. Beautiful job. They've never stood a chance. And our very first production resource and very first battle finished. What shall we build? Uh, we can get Central React Core, it gives us more Energon or Military Skirmish Barracks, Vanguard Assault Bike. I would prefer go with anything that gets us more resources. After all, it was a production resource utilized to pro produce a reactor core, which gives us more resource. Thank you very much. You can actually screw up and choose the same thing that you already have inside your um, city. I think at least that happened at some point when I played as Dvar. But hell of hell is that aside, beautiful job in this first very first battle for Lysander. A minimum amount of damage upon us, Owl got damaged and of course Lieutenant Jiang gotten damage sadly but that's all in the past they will heal over time which actually does tell you that how fast they heal by going over their health points so again regeneration per turn six inactive effect friendly territory plus six so we are not in a territory of our own to be have a full of 12 heal which is, uh, tends to be very important in the end of the day. But there are so many things to explore, find, and, 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 and enjoy. I have no idea where we can go next, because the world is a big place. A very big place. We can see more resources all over the uh, this uh, beautiful deserted planet. But not really deserted, full of insects, though. What are you upon? A shelter. Okay, when collected, the people in this shelf will join your nearest colony as colonists. Oh, this is even a better. But they do have two blade maws. Not one, but two blade maws. I think that wouldn't be a bad uh, next attack for us. Because that alone will give us one more colonist. At the moment, we have three. We'll be moving. Lieutenant Jiang, first and foremost, you don't really have that much of a movement, do you? Let's get like this. Let's stay close to each other. As we move in towards the enemy. That's gonna be our next objective, anywho. Set military research. 
Excellent. Now we can actually see a research tree for the game. And it's massive. We have military and society. <laughs> Laser firearms. Void tech. Of course, you have even a choice between the races you would take. If you uh, maybe even have more races than one leading. But at the moment, as a vanguard, that's all we have. So let's see, in terms of military, we can have a nanite support, which gives us nanite injectors. Use nanite injectors to heal this unit for 15 health points and increase its resistance to all damage channels by 3 for 2 turns. This is definitely something I would go for. We get additional, a tactical operation, a nanite support station, and combat assist system. We'll go with this. That's gonna be the research for the military and society, frontier policies, aquatic deployment, frontier facilities, area surveillance. So we have doctrine, economy, and operations. What we choose? Well, what really suits us? It is about the people first and foremost. So frontier survival, a doctrine operation, plus 15 food in your colonies, colony militia, and we get a combat simulation center. VR combat sims are vital too in preparing forces for battle. Grants 2 experience per turn to all units in stack currently on or adjacent to the colony center hex. Interesting. Of course, we have front, uh, uh, frontier facilities. We get a recreational dome, standard military infrastructure colonizer. There are many things, but at the beginning I would go for doctrine, which gives us frontier policies and give us all the necessary ingredients. Frontier survival, colony militia, and combat simulation center. Research. Both research take four turns. Excellent. Production for Paladra. We have done our production within both Paladra, so now we actually do have a reactor core. And uh, some other stuff, if I'm not mistaken. HQs and colony center. What did we actually even build last time? I cannot remember. Ah, yes. A little bit more of knowledge, that is. But now we have an option of getting something more akin, well, for the barracks, for our soldiers. A vanguard pug would be a very interesting thing, never utilized it. So I'm gonna utilize that. Or we can go vanguard assault bike. Now we're gonna for two turns, we're gonna get produce a specialist training center. I would like my engineers though. Engineers really look cool and I would like them. Orders required and we have ability to annex our first, very first sector. We can take, as you can see, any of these sectors that are close to Paladra. We can annex them, we can see which one gives us the most. A little bit of food. Two energy production. Same up here. This one, two energy production and research. I will go first for this one. Of course, to annex requires an army. Any type of a unit will be sufficient to do this. The arid climate is defined by a dry, unforgiving heat and the general lack of water. And you can see the features, ruins, boost output through research, and arid. And you can actually see what it really gives you. All the remains of a star union are still present in this sector. Possible research, ruins, exploitation, all research, and energy sectors on ruins gain plus one level. Arid. The arid climate is defined, of course, by a dry, forgiving heat and general lack of water. Possible research, arid exploitation, all energy and production, of course, sectors are arid, gain plus one. So first and foremost, we do need an army. And we shall move Lysander. And we'll annex this one. So now it's ours. We'll fall back. And wait out again for the next turn. Or we move in a little bit, to be honest. Get to the Umber Sands, Lieutenant G. Young. We have no need to do anything here. 
but we can at least see what we would be gaining if we do capture a few sectors here the umber sands and all that actually the umber sand does not hold the research station the savage wall holds the overgrown bio dome but that's gonna be for the next a few turns i wish you the very best i wish you all the greatest things in the world and next time more love more drugs and as always more Age of Wonders Planetfall.